Welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here on our YouTube channel for Afros and Audio. If you are a first time watcher or if you've been watching for a long time and you just have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I mean, you know you're coming back. You may as well go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. Hit the little bell right next to it as well to make sure that you get all of the notifications for every time we post a new video, you won't miss out on anything. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards. I am the host of Unicorns Talk podcast and the lead virtual consultant for Afros and Audio. And I'm super duper excited as usual to be here with y'all today, sharing new people, new, uh, well, new to y'all because she's not new to me. She knew to y'all, right? But introducing you to Black creatives who have the knowledge and the skill sets um, that are needed in order to be successful in the audio and podcasting market um, and are willing to impart that knowledge on to you, other Black creatives. Um, so I want to welcome our guest this evening, Andrea Jones from Online, uh, Online Drea. I always get messed up when I get ready to say uh, the name of your company. And Andrea and I, I don't know if I would say we go way back, but we go, we go back though, you know. Uh, I actually worked with Andrea. I hired Andrea about two years ago now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. It's been a while. It has been a minute. Yes. And it feels like too, the podcasting space is just, um, it's transformed since we first met too. So, it's I mean, so it's different. It is it's so different. different. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well. Drea, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Uh, let them know who you are, what you do, and uh, why they should give a shit about what you have to say. <laughs> yes, I love that. Uh, yeah, so I'm Andrea Jones at OnlineDrea.com. I am a social media strategist. So I work with small businesses, podcasters, and creators, really helping them uh, bring their voice to more people using social media marketing, um, helping them make a difference in whatever their message is and sharing their message. Particularly love working with um, socially progressive brands. So my people of color, LGBTQ, um, women-owned businesses. I have a, really a big passion for working with those businesses who are like that. And of course, most of my clients also have podcasts. So they typically use podcasting as a way to share their message. Um, and then I also teach it in the Savvy Social School as well. And of course, on my podcast, Savvy Social Podcast. Yes. So we're going to talk about those things uh, in a lot more detail today. Um, I feel like we have to introduce your little friend back there as well, because he is it a he or a she or is it is it a they? He's what is it? He, his, it's a he, his name mm -hmm. is Gibson. And so I just moved here. I've been here for three months now. And I was like, oh, this chair will be cute back here. Yeah. And this is his chair now. I don't, Listen. I can't even move it. It's there now. And Gibson, Gibson is looking at you so. like, uh, sis, you don't see me back here trying to take a nap. Why are you making all this noise? Gibson is not having it, you know? Um, no. And he's on every call and Gibson has his own Instagram account as well. It's King Prez, P-R-E-Z, Gibson. So King Prez, King Prez Gibson on Instagram. Well, you know, we definitely going to uh, link to Gibson's Instagram account in the description as well. So y'all make sure y'all check that out because King Prez is, uh, yeah, he's, I feel like I want to follow Like, I feel like he's, if I'm going to follow a dog on Instagram, it's going to be him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be he's him. too cute. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so like I was saying before, I'm super excited, um, Andrea, to be talking to you because I feel like it's kind of like catching up, you know. Um, it's been a while since we spoken to each other and so much has changed. Um, you know, I wanted to kind of open up our conversation today just talking about social media because that's how you and I met to begin with um, was through social media. Uh, I realized a couple years ago, and which is still true today, girl, but I realized a couple years ago that one of my issues in terms of growing my brand and getting my the name of my podcast out there, making people aware of who I am and things like that is that I really didn't have a solid social media presence, right? And I know that a lot of Black 
podcasters really struggle with uh, getting our name out there and, and getting exposure for our shows because of their struggles with social media as well. And so I reached out, uh, How I forget how I got your information. I want to say you were recommended to me um, through someone. And that's how I came across you. Who was that? Do you remember? Yes, it was Dr. Joy, uh, Therapy was, for Black Girls. It was yes. Dr. Joy. Yes, I reached out to Dr. Joy, who is also a Louisiana girl. Shout out to Louisiana. Um, and I said, hey, Dr. Joy, you know, I'm looking for a social media girl. And she told me, I mm-hmm. forgot about that. That's crazy. That was, uh, it that just was, so I met you- Dr. Oh, no, sorry. I had met Dr. Joy at Podcast Movement. And so um, it was at the the Black Podcast mi- Mixer for, you know, people of color and podcasts, mostly Black podcasters. And it was hot in that room. But I remember meeting her and I had never heard of her show before, actually, before I met her. Wow. Um, and it just it just proved to me that this is such a, like an amazing space for black podcasters. And so, yeah, I'm glad that I I remember that when you were saying that it was Dr. Joy. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. And so I reached out to Andrea and I ended up hiring Andrea uh, to do some social media stuff for me um, to manage my social media and help me out with that. And and you were amazing. Um, I was not in the place emotionally. um, And I talk about that, you know, in some of my other content that I've created. um, Um, I really kind of chronicled my experience in those moments in in that time period, but I was not in a place emotionally to be able to like even manage all of that. Um, And so being able to work with you, being able to have you come in and kind of take over that aspect of it for me was extremely helpful. Um, What do you find with indie podcasters, right? So like indie podcast, because most black podcasters are indie podcasters. So for indie podcasters like myself, what do you find is the most difficult part about managing or, or building a social media presence? Yeah. So I think as podcasters, we like to create our content, right? We like to make the actual podcast. We've put a lot of time and energy and effort into that, but we don't want to brag about ourselves. Do you know what Mm, I mean? Like we don't want to talk ourselves up. And so when it comes to social media, we shy away from talking about our podcasts on social media. And so that typically is where a lot of indie podcasters struggle is because they're trying to, or that we're hoping what we want is for people to just discover us to just find us and fall in love. Mm-hmm. And typically it requires a little bit more of like a proactive approach rather than just waiting for, for people to find our shows. So that's the biggest problem that I see with indie podcasters is kind of just sitting back and waiting. Um, and then second to that is building a community around your show. So whether you have an audio drama or whether you have an interview based show or whether you have um, a show that's, you know, teaching a lesson, um, Mm. typically we still want to create some sort of space, a community space around our show. Mm -hmm. And so that also could help us not feel like we're promoting, but rather we're helping people get pulled into what we're talking about. And so creating that community around the show helps us to be able to talk about what we do and, and have other people actually then start sharing it for us, which is what we wanted in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I fall into that trap even now. Like it's such a struggle for me um, to post about things like even like tonight I'm going to be doing, I was telling you the IG live for Afros and audio. And I, I think I might've posted about it one time. Um, I think it's this, I don't know. It's, it's like this, uh, voice in the back of my head that's always like, you know, you don't want to brag too much. You don't want to boast too much or, you know, I don't know. It's, and it's not even something that I'm aware of, you know, which is kind of crazy. It's not even something that I'm always aware of, but I feel it. And it's this, this massive hesitation. But like you said, I'm, I'm realizing more and more that you got to put your name out there and you got to let the people know 
who you are and what you have to offer. Um, I reached out to you because I had a feeling that like, I'm, I'm ready, like it's time, like I know that I'm not doing this the way that it needs to be done. But most people tend to like ignore those little nudges and things like that. So how do you know when it's time to reach out for help? Like how, how do you know, okay, like, this is not in my wheelhouse. This is not something that I'm going to be able to do on my own. I think I need to seek some outside assistance. Yes, I think so. Here's the thing. It's hard to ask for help just as a human. It's hard to ask for help. And then when you're thinking about being a creator on top of that, the challenge is you you create content. So then you still struggle to create content for the social media side. So you feel this sense of guilt that I should be able to do this. And then to add on top of that, you're seeing everyone else already doing it. Mm-hmm. So you're scrolling through Instagram, you're scrolling through Facebook, you're scrolling through Twitter, and you see all of the, the finished products, the posts, the perfectly mm-hmm. polished um, graphics and audiograms and tweets and all of that thing. So it it's layers on top of each other. So when you're thinking about outsourcing and getting support, I want you to think about it kind of like um, how you would hire a bookkeeper or how you would hire an accountant. When you're looking for those roles, it's because you could do it. You could balance your own books, but someone else would be faster at it and they will mm-hmm. do a, probably do it better than you could. So when you think about social media, it's not that you can't do it. You could do it, but if someone else could do it better than what you're currently able to do and get you more listeners at the end of the day, then that's kind of a good reason to consider outsourcing it to someone else. Um, There are so many opportunities out there too, especially now. Uh, There's a lot of people in the podcasting space who offer marketing services and that sort of thing. So it's really about from there, finding someone who fits with what you are looking for. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a, it's a great idea or it's a good point that you're making rather the, the being able to find a good fit with someone, like it's not always just about finding somebody that um, can capture your voice or finding someone who understands your brand. Those things are important as well, but budget wise, you know, like sometimes, um, you know, the budget is what the budget is, you know, and, and, and the budget is low sometimes. And so, but there are people who you can work with or programs, um, courses and things like that, that you can take that might be better suited to your budget where you might not have $750 to pay somebody every month, but you have a couple hundred dollars to a $300 that you can buy a course or you can buy a membership or something like that and, and be able to not only get the help that you need, learn how to do it yourself, acquire new skills, but also build and and do what needs to be done for your brand. And so uh, when when we were working together, uh, you had your course that that you were selling your membership. I was it. I think at that time it was just a course, right? Like it wasn't a was it a full blown membership at that point? I think it was it was a course that I was turning into a membership. So I turned this into a membership in August of two thousand and eighteen. So it was right around that time. Um, And it was just a single course before. But what I was noticing was that, so I have my whole process, right? You, You go through the steps. But I was finding that, number one, social media changes so much. I don't know if you've noticed, like even Facebook looks different. It's insane. I'm Listen, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day and I was like, you know, Instagram came out with the reels a couple months Mm -hmm. ago. Right. And I just started seeing these reels kind of start trickling in and I'm like, well, what is this? And how do these people know that this is a thing already? Like, I don't like, are they getting like the bat call or something? Like, I don't understand how people are getting advanced notice about these new trends. It changes so often. You're, you're so right. It's crazy. 
It is. It's insane. And so I was finding that I kept updating and updating. And I was like, this would be better if it were a membership where I could just, instead of having all of these pre-recorded things that I have to re-record, give updates like a live Zoom call update, for instance. And so that's really where that came from. But then also I found that people needed ongoing support. So Mm -hmm. once you say you took the Instagram course and you tried out a few things, I taught you how to do like hashtag research, you tried it and then maybe you want to improve it or it didn't work or it worked differently than you thought it would be. And you have questions. There was no place for those questions to go. So that's where I created the membership, more of like an ongoing support uh, because it's always changing (laughs) and it makes things so difficult for just like the indie podcast to grasp all of the things. Um, and then also selling them individually. So you could take the Facebook course or the Instagram course or the Twitter course, for instance, but let's say you started with the Instagram course and you realize it's not for you. I don't want you to have to pay all over again for another course. It's kind of just all included. So that's where the membership idea kind of came from. Yeah, that, I mean, that's so helpful. Um, it's out. I love membership programs. Let me just put that out there. (laughs) I have actually signed up for several membership programs. um, And I I love them because it really is kind of this on demand kind of thing. And like you were saying, you know, you may not necessarily need everything that's in the membership, but the thing that you need is there, right? And then when you watch the thing that you need, it might bring up something else that you didn't even know you needed. And guess what? That's there too. You can go and and find that information as well. And you can kind of go, it, it, I love that you kind of have this option to move through and what, what is it? Uh, what do they call it? A deep dive? No, no, no. Like, you know how, when you, when you get lost in YouTube videos, like one video leads you to another video, which leads you to another video. Like I, yeah. I enjoy doing that, but like with membership programs, you know, because mm-hmm. it's things that I actually want to learn. It's things that I actually want to, you know, become more proficient or efficient at. And so it's easy for me to kind of go, go down the rabbit hole. That's what it is. (laughs) I knew I was going to get it, go down the rabbit hole. Um, so the savvy it's okay. I told you the pets and things, girl, the, the animals, I keep telling people the pets and the children are like, listen, quarantine, I am here as well. So anyway, uh, so the savvy social, what is it called again? Savvy social school. Yes. Okay. So the savvy social school, right? So you kind of gave us a little bit of information about the savvy social school already. Um, what is kind of, you know, how, how it's built up and what are the courses that are being offered and things like that? Who would most benefit from the savvy social school? Like who is the ideal student of the savvy social school? Yeah. So here's the thing. Most of the people who are in the school don't like social media that much. (laughs) So they know they need to use it. They know that it's important to promote whatever their offers are. So we have podcasters, we have life coaches, we have therapists, we have, you know, um, service-based business owners, all sorts of people in the school. They know they need to use social, but they're not like super keen on it. Um, So those people who are like, I know I need to use this, but I need some guidance to figure out how to do this with the least amount of effort to get the most impact, right? Uh, But then it's also those people who may be new to the technology. So what happens sometimes is like you mentioned Instagram reels, you open up Instagram and all of a sudden there's reels and you're looking around like what? what do I even do with this information? (laughs) Right. So if you want to learn a new skill or something like that, the school is there for you as well, but it's really for, if you know exactly what to post every day, or you're comfortable just hopping on Instagram stories, whenever you feel like it may not be for you. (laughs) Yeah. I, I I think I'm your ideal student, you know, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I I try to say like, don't feel bad about, uh, don't feel bad about not 
knowing it because I think that it is complicated. Um, a lot of like other people, like if you Google or YouTube something, for instance, it's like Instagram is easy. Here's five ways to do it. And you watch the video and go, this doesn't feel easy. This feels like a lot of work. And so that's kind of my approach to it is like, it's not that it's, that you're not getting it is that the tool is complicated. So let's like boil it down, simplify it, make it easier to consume and then actually have like metrics and things to track along the way so that you know if it's working or not. Yeah, absolutely. I I love that approach to it actually. And I love the way you describe that. Like, it's not that you're stupid. It's that the tool is stupid. And, (laughs) you know, um, that makes me feel much better. You know, oddly enough, it makes me feel better about the situation to know that I'm not like just crazy. um, And that these tools really are that difficult to use sometimes. Um, But once you figure it out, it becomes a lot easier. And so I'm glad that you have this program, um, you know, where we can go to learn how to make those things happen. So if you could give, let's say two quick tips, right? Like if somebody is struggling in their social media right now, um, trying to get their podcast out there, trying to uh, engage with their audience and connect with their audience, what are two quick things that they can implement um, that can help them to kind of get that ball moving while they make the decision on whether or not to join the social savvy school. Yeah, for sure. So the easiest thing to start with as a podcaster is promoting your show. So if you're going to commit to something, commit to every time there's a new episode, you're going to talk about it on social media. And when you do talk about it, I want you to think about the ABCs of writing that caption. So the A would be an attention grabbing statement. So what would stop someone from scrolling in their feed, like your post pops up next to their sister's dog and their friend's new baby. Like what, what would stop them from scrolling right past you? So think about something that would reel people in. Um, typically a question works or a bold statement. And I'm talking about this right in that caption. Then you want to list out the benefits of listening to that episode. And when you're talking about the benefits, you want to focus on the feeling of it. And think about this almost like, you know, those um, news headlines that they're like five ways. You can't believe this. Like (laughs) think about some something kind of like that for for pulling people into your episode, even if you have an audio drama. So I get a lot of folks with audio dramas or storytelling based podcasts go, how do I talk about the benefits of it? Focus on the feeling. Is it a special Halloween episode that's going to be spooky and you're going to jump right out of your seat? Or is it a riveting story? You're going to be crying by the end of it. Like figure out what that feeling is. And that's the benefit why someone would want to listen to that episode. And then the C, so A is attention, B is benefit, and then C is your call to action. So I think sometimes as podcasters, we assume that we're talking to our current followers, which is true, but this call to action is for someone who may have just discovered your show. So if someone said, I don't, I've never heard of this podcast before, how do they get it? Um, So really being crystal clear here, put a link, talk about it being on the different platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, list the name of the show. I see so many people just say, find my show on Apple Podcasts. But if someone's looking at that for the first time, what's my show? What, whose show? Yeah. Um, So put the name of your podcast, where they can find it, a link if possible. There's lots of platforms out there that will help you put like all of the links together. Um, and just be crystal clear about it. And I think if you're thinking about approaching social media, just this switch of changing your promotional posts from here's a new episode to, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. You're going to feel this way. And here's how you listen to it. That could be such a powerful way to encourage action off of your posts instead of people just kind of double tapping or liking and keeping on scrolling. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's like really good advice, the the ABCs. And it made so much sense to me. And even just listening to you, you know, just kind of describe it just now, um, the that B piece, the the benefits, I, it never really um, occurred to me. I mean, of course, you know, when you're writing out your notes and stuff, you're always like, okay, what, what is the episode about? But really looking at the emotional piece of that, like what emotion are they going to experience as a result of consuming your content um, and really playing to that and describing that, you know, process or that, that feeling or that, that the thing that's going to make them feel that thing um, that I had never even considered that. So that's some really, that's good information. Y'all, y'all need to be like, I don't know if y'all have, y'all know uh, if y'all follow me, you know, my notebook is never far away. Okay. I always have my little notebook ready. And I feel like it took everything out of me not to like pause for the cause and write that down real quick, but I'm definitely, <laughs> but I'm definitely going to watch the play black, uh, pl play black. Yes. But I'm also going to watch the pay play back my Lord and uh, make sure that I get that down the A B C's of writing out your social media, um, content and in writing out your, uh, status posts and things like that on your social media. That makes so much sense. I love that. Well, Andrea, uh, I'm so excited that, you know, just to have had the opportunity to catch up with you, um, check in with you and see how things are going. Uh, congratulations on your school and, you know, all of your huge big clients that you have um, and just building your business and things like that. Um, I always get excited uh, to see Black people doing well, you know? <laughs> so yes. I'm like Issa, you know, I'm rooting for everybody Black, you know? Um, and so <laughs> So I always get excited to see, um, you know, when people of color, especially women of color, um, are able to just kind of forge your own path and do your own thing and really be the best, uh, say you're the best and be the best, be able to like back that up um, with with what you're doing. And you're definitely uh, in that category. So, yeah, oh, I'm super you. excited. You're thank very you so welcome. much. And you know, something that's, that's, um, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because something that's really important to me is my own podcast as well. And one of the things that this year has brought and actually shown a light on with things like the Black Lives Matter movement is my podcast. So mm -hmm. the Savvy Social podcast this year is actually one of the only, if not the only by a black woman in the top 100 marketing podcasts in the US and Canada, and also in Australia and the UK. There are no other black women in the top 100 marketing charts, I believe, last time I looked, um, or even black people just in general. Wow. And so for, for my, for for that space to be created, to show other people what's possible. I mean, it's, it's, uh, such a, it feels like an empowering thing to be able to mm -hmm. show that. Cause when you scroll through the charts, it kind of looks same, same sometimes, you know? <laughs> and so to see that, um, I, I really like to just, just share that as well, because I think it's important to know Absolutely, girl. Let me tell you, I'm all about tooting your own horn. Okay. Um, and because especially as black women, we have to, we have to toot our own horn sometimes because I didn't see an article about that. I didn't see that posted or plastered anywhere, you know, like that's something that's a major accomplishment, not just for you as an individual, but, you know, for the entity, you know, for, for us as a collective. Um, so congratulations on that. That is, that's huge. And uh, not just in the U S and Canada, but like the UK, Australia. Yeah. Listen, you're doing big things, girl. I ain't mad at you. I am not mad at you. Go ahead and let the people know where they can find you, how they can get in touch with you. And if they are interested in working with you, whether that's through the membership or in any other capacity, how they can do that. Yeah. So the best way to get started would be to try out the free course. 
Um, you can find it by going to onlinedrea.com slash free. And it, I go over things like the ABCs of writing the caption. And also the example I use in the course is with a podcasting example. So what to post when, basically how to set up your week for that plan. Uh, but that kind of gives you a taste of what the school is like, what my teaching style is like. Um, but also hang out with me on social media at online Drea everywhere. I like Instagram stories. My dog's on Instagram stories a lot with me too. So <laughs> And we know that King Prez is in the yeah. building and he's uh, not playing with none of y'all. So uh, with all of the all of Andrea's information is going to be in the description box. So make sure that you scroll on down and check out everything that she has to offer. I mean, who doesn't like a free class? You know, she give you a little taste. Uh, how they say, uh, yeah, taste the milk before you buy the cow. Um, that's what <laughs> Andrea is <getting. laughs> Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That's well, you know, I'm from the South, girl. I mean, even though so I'm from the South, but we never had no cows, you know, like our milk has always been store bought. I'm not that kind of country, you know, but I am yeah. still from the South. So uh, make sure that you check out everything that Andrea has to offer. Uh, social, social, excuse me, the Savvy Social School, the Savvy Social Podcast. Check it out. Uh, listen to a few episodes and if you want to work with her you know how to find her all right thank you so much andrea this oh, has thanks, been Patrice. a this pleasure awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you definitely all right once again everybody make sure that you hit subscribe let us know in the comments what the most difficult part of uh doing your social media is for you if you figured out a life hack around that social media thing go ahead and post that in the comments as well or if you have any other questions about social media how to build your social media presence you know what to do drop it in the comments and we'll make sure that either we'll make another video about it or we might see if we could get Andrea to come back and answer some more questions for y'all. You never know. Uh, just make sure you let us know. Hit subscribe. And um, that's all we got for y'all today. We love y'all and we appreciate y'all. And until next time, be well. Bye. Bye.